And that's NVIDIA. Shares are called higher pre-market. To this as the company is reportedly planning to launch a significantly cheaper version of its Blackwell AI chip for the Chinese market, which will not be subject to U.S. export restrictions. The stock is up 2.6%. Arj, give us the detail. Yes, yeah, so what we know from this Reuters report, it will be uh, priced lower. Uh, it's part of the Blackwell GPU, which is their next generation uh, chipset. Uh, it will be for specifically made for China, priced at around six and a half to eight thousand dollars versus the previous H20, which was ten thousand to around twelve thousand dollars each. But it will be lower spec. Uh, for example, it won't have high bandwidth memory, which has been very critical to a lot of these big uh, AI chipsets as well. Uh, and it'll be less advanced in terms of the manufacturing required, uh, required as well. So that's what we know uh, of the chip so far. But I can anyone do that? I mean, there's a whole point that there's competition, competition coming through very fast into this market. But NVIDIA's motor has been the best of the best when it comes to these GPUs. Can anyone do what it's done with this new China chip? Well, this is where Huawei is catching up very quickly. I think Huawei, over the next few years, is going to have the ability to catch up with the sort of lowest spec chips that NVIDIA has put into the Chinese market. And this is what Jensen Huang is so concerned about. Over the past few months, he has called out uh, a lot of these U.S. export restrictions. He's called them a failure. He says that uh, the, the China AI market in the next two, three years could be $50 billion, and it'd be a tremendous loss if NVIDIA didn't have access to that. And the final part of his comments is that it's better for the U.S. to be in that market for U.S. technology to win out over Chinese technology. If they're cut off from China, that really hampers U.S. tech development as well. One very quick last thing is over the tech earnings season in China recently, we heard a lot of the companies talking about how they're dealing with these export restrictions. And they were talking a lot about optimizing their AI models. So being able to do more with the GPUs that they have. And so this is a big part of the equation now. China and Chinese companies have had to adapt massively to the lack of access to these GPUs and are becoming a lot more efficient. You know, the reason we're talking about NVIDIA is that we've got earnings after the bell Wednesday. The reality is the data center business has been uh, huge for it. And we think we're still seeing a lot of appetite. But what are we going to see from the hyperscalers that seem to be wanting to produce their own silicon and be in competition with NVIDIA? Is that coming to the fore in 2025? It's coming, it's happening, but NVIDIA did a masterstroke recently uh, in Taipei where they unveiled something called NVLink Fusion and they said you can make your own custom made chips but we have the ability for you now to link them to our GPUs and that is a huge move because if they do that they are still very much at the center of that AI infrastructure conversation. Well Arjun you'll have to come back tomorrow to help us preview in more detail what to expect from NVIDIA. Um, always great to chat around the desk with you. Uh,